Sitting next to William and Hartzell is the, my favorite person I've been working with. I've been saying this over and over again throughout these past two days. I absolutely am thrilled to work with Rainbow Push. And we're going to be joined by Reverend Jeanette Wilson in a moment. But I do believe the next person we have has a heart out because she's one of the leaders of the country and the leader of the, of the, we are so lucky to be living in a moment when Pramila Jayapal is one of the most influential leaders in the United States of America and in the House, in the House of Representatives. It is a blessing for the society and the world. It could be even all the way down to the salvation of our relationship to this planet that gives us life. Because on every issue that is true and dear to the hearts of progressives and really all good people, and yes, as Cenk said, the majority of Americans, for sure, Pramila Jayapal fights for it. And she not only fights for it, she does it with about as much political acumen as any member of Congress in the history of this country. Please welcome Representative Pramila Jayapal. Progressives, hello, how are you? Are you ready to win this? Are you ready to win our progressive change? It is so great to be with you and I wanna thank Alan so much for all your leadership and PDA. Um, I was at Rainbow Push last night honoring the great Reverend Jesse Jackson and I said, and I said up on stage that uh, really Rainbow Push and what Reverend Jackson fought for was the precursor to the modern progressive movement. It was the intersection between racial, economic, and gender justice, and the movement that recognized that working people across this country deserve to be seen, deserve to be heard, deserve to be dignified with rights for everyone. And so I'm grateful to Rainbow Push as well. Um, we have accomplished so much as progressives, and we are getting ready to win in November. And when we do, when we do, we will accomplish so much more. And I want to give a special shout out to our Illinois Progressive Caucus members, Jonathan Jackson, Delia Ramirez, Jan Schakowsky, Chewy Garcia, Danny Davis, it's an amazing progressive delegation, and I know you're going to hear from some, and you already hear, heard from, so, uh, from some, but we couldn't do the work we do without these incredible progressive members. So thank you, those of you in Illinois, for sending those folks. Look, I'm an organizer. That's what I did for two decades before I came to Congress. I was actually never interested in being in elected office. I only decided to run for elected office because I realized that we have an organizing opportunity inside Congress that we have the opportunity to elect organizers who can build power within Congress. And I knew that there were a couple of things that progressives needed to do on the inside as well as the outside. We needed to leverage the power of our voting bloc. We needed to work with the outside movement partners to be strategic and clear in our goals and organized in our approach. And we needed to continue to show that the agenda that we are working for is one that intertwines race, class, and gender. And that these policies are not just progressive, they are actually popular and populist, not just in deep blue districts like mine, but in rural red places, purple places, that these are the things that working people, whatever you wanna call these policies, these are the things that working people and poor people across this country need. And so it was really also about making our agenda the mainstream agenda. And as chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, you're gonna hear from our founder next. I hear he's stuck in traffic, but you're gonna hear from Bernie Sanders who founded the Progressive Caucus in 1991. We are so grateful to Senator Sanders. He's been an amazing friend and ally to me. Um, and as chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, I built it from uh, you know, what it was back then when Bernie was here, which was, he always says it was a couple people that came together and complained about how we weren't getting stuff done. Now, we've been able over the last eight years to build a caucus to 100 members, almost 100 members strong. 
And that is almost half of the Democratic caucus. So not, we're not quite at the 50% mark, but we're almost half of the Democratic caucus. We revamped our rules. What does it mean to be a progressive? How do you stay as a progressive? And we started exercising what I call the courage muscle, the courage muscle to actually stand up and push, to use our votes as a block of leverage as far as we possibly can, and to build a cohesive block of votes that we utilized over and over again in the last many years um, in the toughest of situations, holding the line to stand up for more for our people. And we also showed that progressives can govern. There was always this thought that somehow if you're progressive, you can't govern. And we showed, no, you can govern, and you can get real progress done, and you can get our message out to a broader group. Now, we've also grown our Progressive Caucus PAC from just when I came in $300,000 uh, per cycle that we had to help elect progressives across the country to over $4 million now per cycle that we can help. And we're using it to try and elect more progressives across the country and to defend our incumbents. Now, I'll be clear. We have seen uh, the influence of big money. We have to get big money out of politics. That is the, that is the message. We've got to do it. We have to make that happen. But I, I would just suggest to you that the reason that all that big money is coming in is precisely because they are afraid of how much we have achieved. And so this cycle, our PAC is proud to support a whole slate of new progressives, including LaMonica Iver and Sue Altman in New Jersey, Sarah McBride in Delaware, Latifah Simon, Evan Lowe, Laura Friedman, Luz Rivas, Joker, and Dave Min in California, and we're gonna continue to grow that. Now, what is all of this produced. Thanks to progressives, we got things done in the last four years that most people thought were impossible just a few years ago. And it's really thanks to this movement, thanks to all of you in the room, thanks to progressives in the House. Thanks to progressives, we held the line to demand that an actual bill get drafted that was called Build Back Better and passed in the House. And that was the language that led to the Inflation Reduction Act. There would have been no Inflation Reduction Act without Build Back Better. And that meant that we made the largest investment ever in taking on climate change, finally standing up to big pharma, and finally making billionaires and big corporations pay just a little bit more in their, of their fair share in taxes. We're gonna keep going with that, make them pay their full fair share. It was progressives inside and outside of Congress who pushed for executive action by the Biden-Harris administration to cancel student debt and already, already, the administration has canceled 167 billion, with a B, dollars in student debt for almost 5 million Americans. And that is almost 10% of all the people who have federal student loans have had their debt canceled under this last administration. It was progressives inside Congress who kept pushing to ensure that we got our Justice 40 initiative codified. What does it mean? It means that 40% of our federal investments go to the communities that have been most disproportionately burdened across the country. That is a massive sea change and it was taking on our institutionally inequitable process. And it was progressives who held the line to demand that CHIPS funding does not go to companies who are doing stock buybacks. And it is progressives who continue to ensure that that is the case. <laughs> and it has been progressives pushing so hard to rebuild that fragile and diverse coalition now with a working class agenda that sees us all for who we are and fights for our collective dignity to get not just what is our right, my friends, but what we actually deserve as human beings on this earth. And so that is why 
The Progressive Caucus released a day one agenda for 2025 when we take back the House and the Senate and keep the White House. And we work closely with the Biden-Harris campaign and now the Harris-Walls campaign to make sure that we are ready to move that agenda forward. It calls for a $300 billion investment in housing because the rent is too damn high. It calls for universal child care where no family pays more than 10, 7% of their income for humane immigration reform, for getting rid of the filibuster so we codify abortion rights and voting rights and get money out of politics. We raise the minimum wage. We continue to be aggressive on antitrust law so we hold those big corporations accountable and more investments in climate change. We fight for equality for our LGBTQIA community. We ban assault weapons so our kids can go to school and be safe. And we advance racial justice in every sphere. Now, by the way, we know how to pay for this. We could just make the billionaires and the wealthiest corporations actually pay their fair share of taxes, and we will have plenty of money to do what we need to do. Because, my friends, we do not suffer as a country. We do not suffer from scarcity to be able to invest in these things. We suffer from the greed of a few. We have the money. And it is time. And this is the popular populist economic agenda that is going to get us to victory. And we are seeing that excitement and enthusiasm across the country. We always said that our victory depends on engaging young people and black and brown voters and indigenous and Latino and AAPI voters across this country, working people, poor people. That is our diverse rainbow coalition that is going to take us to victory in November and going to make sure that we get this done, that we make sure we lift up every single person across this country sees themselves in us and knows that the government is here to fight for you, to fight for working people and poor people, no matter who you are across this country. Thank you all very much, and let's get it done. Thank you. He's not late. No, he isn't right on time.